You can take your application performance analysis to the next level and gather more detailed information about your customer experience and user intelligence by adding your own content to your data with custom events and attributes. This tutorial will cover the types of custom data you can add, how to determine what type of custom data you need to add, and an overview of the methods with which you can add your custom data, including features, use cases, and limitations. When deciding what data you want to add as custom instrumentation, it's helpful to know what default data you already have available. Insights data is automatically collected from your APM account's transactions and errors, your browser account's page view events, and your mobile account's interactions. You can find this data by clicking on the Data Explorer icon in the left bar menu. For more information about event types and how to view the data Insights collects about your app, watch the tutorial Introduction to Insights for a step-by-step -step guide to navigating the Data Explorer page. Before we go into ways to add custom events and attributes, I want to briefly touch on what is available at different subscription levels. If you are using the free Lite subscription for APM, you'll not be able to access Insights. However, at the Essentials subscription level in APM, you will have access to New Relic Insights as well as three days of event data retention. At the Pro subscription level, you will have eight days of event data retention. Before I get into the different methods for adding custom data, it's important to take a moment to understand the difference between events and attributes. The easiest way to explain this is to go into the Insights Data Explorer and open a data table. If you aren't sure how to find this, refer to the Introduction to Insights tutorial. I'll open my data for page views in the Data Explorer. This table represents all the data about the event type page views for my app. All the available attributes are represented by the columns in this table, and each row is an individual page view event. And of course, page view is the event type. When you want to add custom data, you will first need to decide whether you want to add a custom event or a custom attribute. For example, if you want to add custom data about buttons users click on your site, you would want to add page action events. Page action events show something a user does on a page after that page is loaded. Whereas, if you want to know something about what goes on inside a page before it loads, you would add custom attributes to page view events. These page view events start when a user requests a page and end when the page finishes loading. Custom attributes get added to already existing events. Think of this as adding another column to the data table we just saw. As each event occurs for this event type, a new row of data is recorded with the custom attributes you just added. Custom events, on the other hand, will result in a whole new data table with a new event type or name. You can also add external data as a custom event. You might want to do this if you need to collect information that isn't about the performance or functionality of your application, but is still relevant to your business in some way. For example, the New Relic University team collects all kinds of custom data from a video hosting service about what tutorials get watched the most and how much of each tutorial people watch. We created a custom event type to describe video views with relevant attributes based on the data we were able to collect from our video hosting service. Here's a general rule of thumb you can use to determine whether you need to add a custom event or custom attribute. If you just need a little more detail on existing data, you probably need to add a custom attribute. But if you have a whole list of info and none of it is already being recorded, you may need to create a custom event. And for the different event types, remember, transaction events are things that happen in the back end of your app and, when triggered, will most likely generate a new page. Page view events happen once a page is called and end once a page finishes loading. And page action events are things that you can do on a single page that change some of the information on the page but don't actually call a whole new page. For example, changing a time window on a calendar page or moving a map around would trigger a page action event. If you have a single page app, Page action events are going to be especially critical for capturing your user interactions. Now that we have some groundwork laid out, let's go over each of the different methods for adding custom data. There are four different ways you can add custom data to your Insights account. These are the Insights API, the APM Agent API, the Browser Agent API, and the Mobile Agent API. All of these methods have unique capabilities and specific purposes 
as well as a few important things in common. First, when adding custom data, you will always have to specify the event type. Second, there is a list of reserved words you cannot use for any custom data because they are already in use by the default data collected by Insights. You can find a complete list of these reserved words on the Docs site. Third, since almost all data collected by New Relic is time series data, a timestamp is required. If you find that your attempts to add custom data fail, these are some of the very first things you will want to double check when troubleshooting. Now let's take a closer look at the unique aspects of each of the methods individually. I'll start with the Insights API. The important feature of this method is that it is an HTTP API, which means it works with any programming language using curl commands. This is really handy when your app is built in a language not sufficiently covered by other custom data methods, or if your app uses multiple languages. This method also allows you to send data to insights that is external to your app. Literally anything that can be reported online can be sent using the Insights API. As long as you can get the data, you're only limited by your own imagination. Some really great examples of external data include video view data, social media data, and user data, like users' city, emails, shipping data, or UPS tracking numbers. You can also retroactively add events using this method for up to 24 hours after the fact. You're most likely going to use this method when you want to add a whole chunk of data that isn't captured in any way by the APM agent or browser agent. A limitation of this method is that you can only add custom events with whatever associated attributes you want but you couldn't add a single attribute to an already existing event type. There is also a limit of 255 attributes per event sent, a 4 kilobyte limit on the length of string attributes, and a 1 megabyte limit on the total size of a single API call. To use this feature, you need to have a paid Insights subscription. Next, we'll take a look at the APM Agent API. The important feature of this method is that this is where you can really dive into the inner workings of your app and get at the root of performance problems. You're most likely going to use this method when you want to add custom attributes to transaction events, transaction error events, or page view events. In fact, anytime you dig into a transaction trace to see what's going on in your app and come across the icon indicating that there isn't enough instrumentation for the APM agent to determine what is going on, you are likely going to need to use this API to add custom data. This method is language specific. Refer to the doc site about your APM agent language for full details. There are a few limitations to this custom data method. First, sending a lot of events can increase the memory overhead of the agent. Second, similar to the Insights API, there is a limit on the number of attributes you can send. In this case, there is a limit of 64 attributes per event sent. There is also a 4 kilobyte limit on the length of string attributes and a 1 megabyte limit on the total size of a single API call. To use this feature, you need to have a paid APM subscription. Next, I'll go over the Browser Agent API. The important feature of this method is that it is pretty easy to use with fairly simple JavaScript or jQuery. It is also incredibly flexible, allowing you to customize data collection about your end user's interactions with your app in just about any way you might want, as well as adding details to your browser session traces. You're most likely going to use this method when you want to capture events, actions, route changes, or basically anything that an end user might do on your site or app. Specifically with the Browser Agent API, you can record a custom event within the page rename the page so it appears differently in the New Relic UI, report an additional time point where the page load is considered finished, add details for actions, errors, and events to session traces, add customized names and values to page view and page action events. A limitation of this method is that you must have the browser agent enabled and meet some minimum version and compatibility requirements. There is also a limit of 64 attributes per event sent, a 4 kilobyte limit on the length of string attributes, and a 1 megabyte limit on the total size of a single API call. There are also a few limitations specifically for page action events that I want to touch on. Page action events are sent to Insights every 10 seconds, 
and there is a maximum of 20 events per 10 second harvest cycle per browser. After the 20 event limit is reached, additional events are not captured. Also, custom attribute values cannot be complex objects, only simple types such as strings and numbers. You can check the doc site about browser for full details. To use this feature, you will need to have an Insights Pro trial or Insights Pro annual subscription level. The New Relic mobile agent can also send data to New Relic Insights. It automatically gathers and sends a default set of data from your mobile app, including data about interactions, sessions, and crashes. The mobile agent can also send custom attributes and events to track specific areas of your application in more detail. For example, you may wish to track app performance for a key group of users, or user data such as email, account info, or other user-specific details. To use this feature, you need to have a paid mobile subscription. Now that you have an overview of the methods for adding custom data to Insights, you're ready to determine what custom data methods are right for your app and what custom data you want to add.